You're listening to The Confidence Podcast, your one-stop shop for motivation, inspiration, and confidence to help you boldly and bravely take action on your dreams. I'm your host, Trish Blackwell, and I teach entrepreneurs and dream chasers to take action on the dream God put on their hearts. I empower go-getters to get past their stubborn insecurities so they can crush their goals, outgrow their fears, and create prosperity in their businesses and lives. It's time to rise and shine. Let's dive deep. You guys, welcome to the Confidence Podcast, episode number 324. And something really funny just happened. I'm going to share with you right off the bat. Actually, wait, I'm going to tell you what today's show is about so that you decide, look, I mean, I get it that not every episode is for everyone. So I like to give you permission to say, see you next week. I'm just glad to say hi. Even if we just say hi and bye real quick, we spent time together this week. But if you're interested, this week we're talking about people pleasing and how to be free from people pleasing. That said, let me tell you more specifically about why I almost got this like little extra nugget of wisdom and confidence for you today, um, because I, it's really important to me that I, tra- I share transparently that you guys know that confidence doesn't mean you don't, don't have the chatter going on in your box, in, in, the, in your box, in the box that's your brain, the back end music that you hear in the constant conversation. We are constantly in conversation with us and we're inundated with messages from around the world and from pressures and advertisers and people trying to get our attention that we're not enough or that we shouldn't do something where it's not okay to be scared. And I just, I like to, especially when I work one with my clients, really tell them about some of the narration that goes on in my head and how I turn down that voice, how I answer that voice, how I tell that voice to go away and that what I'm going to say is good enough or what I'm going to say and what I'm doing, I'm moving forward on. So I'm going to give you a little glimpse into that. Just now I started recording the episode and you guys, I've been doing this for six years. I, very comfortable. But you know, the funny thing is, is sometimes starting is the hardest thing. And it's not just starting. Like I show up, you guys, I do my research each week. I put a lot of heart and soul and like um, prayer actually into what I do. And so I'm prepared. I've got my notes out. I'm like, I always like dress appropriately. I got some pretty dangly earrings on so that I feel good. But what I mean is starting. It's like the start. I, I, I've never re-record. I very rarely edit what I say. But I just pressed start and then I like jumbled my words and I was like, oh, and then I tried again and then I did it again. Y'all, what a great sign that often starting, whether it's for the first three seconds or 30 seconds of something is often the hardest. And I know that so many of you have goals and things and things you want to start or you want to be more consistent and you're like, why am I not doing these habits? And it's because you just, it's not that you don't have the desire. It's not that you don't have the structure. It's not that you don't have the discipline. It's not about discipline, but I think sometimes it's about knowing that when you start, when you have that micro moment of going, am I committing or not? Like, like, because that's what I just did. I committed and then it's like, whoa, whoa, we got to start over, which was not necessary. Sometimes when we decide, okay, I'm sitting here in my journal, do I open it and start or do I not? When we go, well, no, I could do these other things. We come up with other reasons. I think sometimes if you just know that the hardest thing is getting the ball rolling, that's really freeing. You know, when I worked full-time fitness, I liked to tell people like, you guys, the worst part of a workout is the beginning. No, most people that don't know that think that they just don't like to exercise. But I'm telling you, if you get past the first 10 minutes, it doesn't mean it's always going to be glorious. Sometimes it's always going to feel challenging, but sometimes you get that, wow, I'm so glad I'm doing this feeling. Like I am an avid runner. I love running. I run marathons for just absolute pure pleasure. My favorite workouts are when I do like a long run, like a 15 mile run. Y'all, you need to know this. The first two miles are terrible. I hate them. Like they are like, they, they seem like they take three times longer than any other mile and and they're harder. And so start, it's just, it's this principle that's the start principle and everything. And so I just want to encourage you today to know that I know this and sometimes I still have to self-talk myself. And I think that the biggest feedback I get with my members of the College Confidence and with my coaching clients, they go, why can't I learn this faster? And you guys, it's not about that. It's about just being patient with yourself as you learn something. You know, I um, recently did an IGTV episode. And if you're not connected with me on Instagram, you should be. Um, go look me up at Trish underscore Blackwell. And I've got a couple IGTV um, episodes up there. And the one I posted this past week was about how long it took me to learn that communication is the key to life. I had a swim coach who gave me this as a nugget of wisdom. And he wrote it. He said it to us every day. He also wrote it at the top of our workouts every single day, at the top and the bottom. So I heard for three years the same one sentence consistently from the same person who was a leader in my life, a mentor to me. And you guys, it, I, I was like, okay, communication is key to life. But do you, do you want to know something? 15 years later, 
that that statement, I got to say thank you, Tim Kelly, for being one of the main reasons my marriage is strong because communication is the key to life because I've taken that wisdom. Now, it took me 10 years once I like got into the quote unquote real world. Like for 10 years, I like underplayed that. But I'm telling you, I, I, look, I spent seven minutes coaching on this in IGTV. So if you are interested, go back and listen to that IGTV episode because I talk about what does this mean? Like communication is the key to life. Communication with yourself, communication with others, with your relationships, with the people you work with, but and communication with God. Like I take this on all levels. So if that is interesting to you. Go ahead. But I, and please go check it out and let me know what you think. But I wanted to share it with you. And it was important part of the IGTV episode was that you guys, this takes time. It takes time. I have no shame that it took me three years of hearing the same thing over and over and over. And then about another five to 10 years for me to actually go, oh, I know what's wrong. I'll use this, you know? So let's be patient with ourselves in the journey and know that we're not going for perfection. We're not going for finish line here. We're going for progress and progress is to be celebrated. So let's actually get into what we're talking about today, people pleasing. Um, This week, particularly, we are in in the realm of people pleasing. We're talking about the chains of people pleasing, what their weight is actually doing in our lives. And then I'm going to share with you the deeper spiritual meaning that we teach ourselves when we people please. And we're going to close the episode out with 10 tips to help you stop people pleasing. Before we do that, one of my favorite things of the week is our review of the week. And I got to tell you guys, this is so, I'm, 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 I'm trying to share more of what's really going on in my heart. But recently, kind of in my, in my prayer time, my journaling time, God has put on my heart to, to build more people up, to build others up. And it's so funny. You think about the best 10 books you've ever read. My question for you is, have you taken the time? It's not a lot of time we're talking about. It's about a minute or two it would take you to write a review for those books on Amazon. What about the best podcast you've listened to? Have you taken the time? And I'm not just saying mine. Like, any podcast that's really moved your soul, given you um, great parenting advice, helped you encourage yourself, like, or been a great resource. Like, have you written the review and built them up? It's so funny if you, I, I, I've been, I've shared you with you guys my big, hairy, audacious goals to get this show to a thousand reviews this year, which is, you guys, that's a big goal. And it's hard to ask for help. But I ask you guys to, and you're going to hear in people pleasing, one of the tips that we share is like one way out of people pleasing is to start asking for more help. But that means like it's sometimes you're asking for help saying, I need you guys. I need your help to help us grow, right? It's hard because I'm like, it's embarrassing, but I'm over this embarrassment. When I tell tell you something magical happened to me when I turned 36 this year, I was kind of like, why do I care so much? I, I don't care so much. I care, but I'm not, I don't care about protecting my ego as much. And so I'm really working this year to to say yes to everything that I feel like God is saying to me. And it's so funny. Um, as I've been asking for these reviews, like when I open my podcast app and listen, I was listening to these my podcasts that I enjoy, I had this little like, you know, back in my mind thought of like, well, have you written a review for their show? And I was like, oh, no, 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 I'm too busy. I'm running on the treadmill. But by the way, guys, I am the master at texting on the treadmill. Like I can have five conversations. It's one of the ways I entertain myself. I text all my friends. I catch up with people while I'm on the treadmill one handed. I mean, it's great. So yet I was like, oh, well, I'll do that when I'm off the treadmill. That's just too hard. Uh, no, like I, I, I was brought to um, truth with myself with the hypocrisy that I'm like, well, I'm too busy. I'll do that later. And I was like, well, no, no, no. If you're going to ask for things, you need to give that to other people too. And so I am on a personal mission to write reviews for a book or for a product that I buy on Amazon to write reviews for every podcast that I listen to to start really pouring into other people with gratitude and thanks and so I'm asking you guys today to continue to do that for the show help us reach that goal but please don't just write for my show send some love to the other podcast shows that bring life into your light and who bring light what about a, a product you're just really thankful for? These businesses, these people who are who are making a difference in the world are doing that. Whether it's a simple product or um, it, it's something uh, like a coaching podcast or a parenting podcast that's been beneficial to you or a how-to and you're learning woodworking. I don't know. But that you're grateful for. There's Gratitude is not the same when you just keep it to yourself. And we have this great gift of technology to be able to write reviews. And I'm telling you, it's going to have a domino effect into that, the people's lives. And so I think you'll get more satisfaction to fulfill it. So I'm just letting you guys know I, what's been on my heart. And I've been, I've been showing up more. And I'm going to continue. You have my word. That I'm going to continue showing up more to say thank you to the people that encouraged me. Thank you to the products, the books, the things. Because 
if I'm so busy that I can't inconvenience myself for legitimately one minute while I'm doing something else like running on the treadmill while I can actually, I'm the type of runner on a treadmill that actually shops on Amazon or texts people, like I realize, well, this is just laziness of thought that I'm not building others up. So anyways, all that to be said, thank you guys for those of you who are writing reviews to the show. I want to highlight our listener of the episode, our listener, um, I misspoke there. Our listener of the episode comes at the end of the episode. Our review of the episode this week is from Abby Wright 101. And she said, Trish, I need to praise God for you and thank you for your obedience. I've been listening for a few months now, binging at least once a week and praying during each show that God would make all the things that you talk about true in my life. I'm working hard to grow my business with my eight month old son and a husband who works full time and goes to school part time. And the need for personal growth is huge. You are relatable and make all these topics easy to manage and totally doable. Thank you. And one day soon, I hope to join the College of Confidence. Your hard work has made so much possible within me and I can't even express the level of respect and appreciation I have for you. Thank you. Girl, I can't wait for you to join the College Confidence. Thank you. And I want to encourage you. You are in the tunnel right now. Like you are like what you're describing. I love this can do attitude. You've got uh, basically you have an infant and a husband's working full time and going to school part time and you're building a business. Like, please give yourself credit for what you are doing and start and continue to look to the vision that that is being built in your heart and that you know you are bringing into into fruition, even though it may be not, not the speed or the convenience or ease that you would like. It's not about convenience, it's about consistency. And this is a really beautiful time of your life to be present and to get to grow and learn at the same time. Like, I love... I love having a four-year-old who chats my head off, right? Like I am totally present, no earphones in. But I also love having my two-year-old who I can keep one earphone in sometimes when he's out playing. I keep one earphone in because he's not interested in having conversations with me yet. We can still have like small dialogue. And I am learning while I'm listening to something that, that challenges me or grows me or teaches me while I'm also being present with him. You know, there's, it, 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 so you're at a place where, and I also appreciate his naps when my daughter doesn't nap. So there's so much opportunity in the season you're even though there are limitations in the season you're in, there's a lot of opportunity. And I hope you lean into that. And I just want you to know I am cheering you on. Cannot wait for you to join the College of Confidence. So let's talk about this. What is people pleasing anyways? I pulled this list. I'm not claiming it as my own. And I have the link to the article if you're interested in reading it. So you can just go to the show notes for the show. It's trishblackwell.com forward slash three, two, four. And what is people pleasing? Anyways, this is an article that I um, pulled some resources from for from psychology today. And it's 10 signs that you're a people pleaser. And here they are. You pretend to agree with everyone. You feel responsible for other, how other people feel. You apologize often. You feel burdened by the things you have to do. You can't say no. You feel uncomfortable if someone is angry at you. You act like the people around you. You need praise to feel good. You go to great lengths to avoid conflict. And you don't admit when your feelings are hurt. You guys, I used to tick the boxes on almost every one of these. Literally. Pretending to agree with anyone, everyone. Feeling responsible for other people's feelings. Those are their, that's their responsibility. Apologizing. I was, the, I was an over-apologizer most of my life. Burdened by the things you have to do. That's overwhelm. That's busyness. An inability to say no. Um, uh, an inability to step into conflict or to be have any conflict in your life if somebody is angry at you or disagrees with you. Act. Man, I was the, a chameleon. I acted like everyone that was around me. Um, needing praise to feel good and not admitting when I actually had some hurt feelings. And so another thing I pulled from, um, I pulled this one from the Huffington Post. I have the link to the article in my on my show as well, is this is something they said. They said, you may think being a people pleaser makes you quote unquote a good person. And it's perhaps even a generous or loving way to be. Nope. It's selfish to be a people pleaser. Why? Because being attached to pleasing others is really about you. You are the one who wants to be liked. You are the one who does not want to upset anyone. You are the one that wants to look good for others. You are the one who is not okay with other people's reactions. You are the one protecting yourself from confrontation. And you are the one who is choosing to withhold expressing who you truly are. And by doing all of those things, you're keeping yourself, your light, and your love from the world. And that is selfish. And they find they finish up with saying, remember this, what other people think of you is none of your business. Obsessing about how to please others or being to be liked is a misuse of your energy. And so I wanted to pivot off of that, both the list. I mean, here's the deal. 
if you're a people pleaser, you know it. Like you don't need a list to go, am I? But I think it's interesting. Maybe maybe you've never considered yourself a people pleaser. And maybe hearing the list has got you a little bit more open to hearing and receiving this week's coaching. But going, going being afraid to be yourself, um, feeling insecure in being yourself, like wanting, just desperately wanting to be liked and thinking that's going to give you the peace in your heart that you want. Um, but I really agree with this concept that the, but people pleasing and trying to fit in the mold and try to make everybody happy, what it really does, it's selfish. And it's also a, it's also a misuse of power. It's making you sort of seem like you have more power than you think you do in other people's lives. And I'm going to tell you, that's not you. God's got power, not you. Like we try so hard to change other people's opinions or people's circumstances or make everybody like us but what people think of us is not our business and when we're more we're really people's opinions are, are like the winds right they're constantly changing and so we chase opinions and we chase people pleasing we're we're running in circles and a people pleaser often feels that way like they're running in circles and they're exhausted and they're wondering why are they feeling the way they do because they are just spent and the, the thing is, is then it's a misuse of our energy. So that's what goes back to why it is selfish. You are protecting your reputation in such a way that you use all of your energy, doing all the things, getting on the busy bus so that you can maybe be liked. And what it does is it helps you step into a place. It, 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 it not helps you. It makes you step into a place where you don't have the energy, the emotional capacity or the time to actually think about who you are, to think for yourself, to develop into yourself, to to talk to God, to figure out what your calling and purpose in life is, and then to step up and serve others and make a difference in this world with your gifts, with your talents, with your story, with your actual energy and presence. And so people pleasing isn't just toxic. It's one of the things that robs us the quickest of our ability to be present, of our ability to have peace in our heart, because it's impossible to feel peace if you are prescribing to people pleasing right and you know i mentioned this really quick briefly but next next week in the college of confidence i'm dropping a new course called how to get off the busy bus it's a four module course it's only available to college of confidence members so if what we're talking about here and people pleasing is resonating with you and it really and you know that you're getting on the busy bus often we get on the busy bus out of fear of missing out out of fear of being pushed out and out of people pleasing of trying to earn worth and try to earn uh, acceptance and being liked if that resonates and you're like okay I definitely need coaching on this then you definitely need to get into the college confidence of this month that is the course that we are releasing just a few days from when this this podcast episode is going live and you, can, you of course can do that at collegeofconfidence.com as a brief reminder I offer a 30-day money-back guarantee and it's canceled anytime I so passionately believe in what is available in the, co the coaching and the the life transformation that can happen with the college re resources that are in the college confidence um that i want to make it a no-brainer for you to be able to give a shot so that is that is why that's the weight of people pleasing the weight of that can you imagine like the weight of it is that it, it's it's the finish line that never ends so like, i went for a run yesterday and it was so funny i it's middle of the day and i was working and my kids were at school and preschool and I was going to go to the gym because it was 90 degrees here in Virginia. And I'd been running a bunch of days. And so I wanted to do something other than run. Well, my Irish Terrier, who was like being a bum in the corner, he saw me get up. He knows that's the middle of the day. It's when I typically work out. He like, it was almost like he put on his cute face. Like he all of a sudden like was like the cutest thing you've ever seen. Followed me around, was like all interested. And I was like, I mean, he wants to go for a run. Fine. So I ended up running outside, not by choice. But I got to the end of the run and I was exhausted. I dropped, he only made it a mile, but I was at mile six. And, um, you know, I just, I felt the weight of the heat and here in Virginia, the weight of the humidity. And then it happens to be that the last mile of my run is all uphill. So imagine being 90 degrees. You're not even supposed to be outside. You, you're, you're, you're actually didn't even plan on running. And now you're running uphill in like 100% humidity and 90% heat. Well, yeah, like the weight slowed me down. Like the weight, I want you to feel the physical weight of not being in like a place of peace sometimes it like for me to give you a physical example i want you to feel like it's that heart rate elevated like this burden that exhausts you it's chasing a finish line and i'll tell you that last mile felt like it was a finish line that was never going to get there imagine if i was living through life with that sense of exhaustion that sense of weight that sense of wow i really don't feel myself i really don't feel my best 
but I kept going uphill and I kept chasing something that my, my house, let's pretend my house kept moving from me. And I'm like, oh, when am I going to get there? What's oh, another quarter mile? Not quite there yet. When am I going to be happy? Just not quite yet. You need them to like, you need more likes on Instagram. You need more of this. You need more money. You need just one more pound down, one more size. What All of those things, that is the finish line that keeps moving. And when you're on the people pleasing busy bus, it's like that, but you're walking in not, you're running uphill in 90% heat and 100%, 90% heat, 90 degree heat, 100% humidity in a finish line that keeps moving. That, so this isn't just the finish line that keeps moving. It's just the finish line running uphill in the heat in bad circumstances that keeps moving. That is what people pleasing will do to you. That is what it will steal from you. That is what it keeps you from. It keeps you from really living well and then you know I wanted to you you heard me in the in the um preamble here to today's show of like what is the deeper spiritual meaning we teach ourselves when we people please because this isn't this is one it's about what we're taking from ourselves the fact that it is selfish the fact that it doesn't actually serve people it's not just oh I'm so nice I'm a people pleaser that's a giant cop-out it's a justification and a pity party for a character belief about yourself that isn't true and doesn't serve you or serve others. And so the deeper spiritual meaning is that when we step into people pleasing, we step out of balance. We step into an over focus on trying to control what we can't. Uh, we're giving ourselves over to be slave to, to opinions. We're giving other people the power to rule our lives rather than God. We're giving other people their opinion, their feelings, their emotions power and those are things so again it's like we're we're we are do we are running in circles because we're trying to control that which we have no right or power to control and also when we prescribe to people pleasing we sign up for our value to be based on what other people say think or pay us we were we lose our worth in being the human being we were created to be and our worth gets tied up in what we do versus who we are that statement because that's like four years of therapy right right there for me. And I don't say like that's like we just done four years of therapy. I'm saying I've gone through four years of therapy for that to get to a place where I am walking in peace about that statement that my value is who I am, not in what I do. Because I was prescribed to people pleasing. Like you, you know, I'm using the word prescribed because I think it's like it's a prescription that we've given ourselves. Oh, this will fix it. Like there's a when you need a prescription for something medical, you get this to solve the problem but the problem keeps going We've par the problem self-perpetuates and so we can think about this in terms of do I prescribe to people pleasing or maybe even and this wasn't even my notes this is bonus brainstorming as we as we are recording maybe maybe just maybe I'm subscribing maybe this is Netflix maybe this is the the Amazon Prime box that I tick maybe this is me saying my subscription is on I am choosing like I'm choosing to watch this channel I'm choosing to pay the cost of this I've decided this is worth it and so we are choosing to believe that we are valuable based on other people's opinions choosing to believe that we are um what we do who we are in value based on what we do not versus who we are and so you guys I, it's been really so I, you know kind of like in the same way you can cancel a subscription whether it's to serious radio or um uh netflix hulu all these subscription things maybe you do a, a subscription box you can untick that box you can stop paying that cost the power is in you. You are not just a people pleaser by nature. I said that for so long. Do yourself a favor and don't be stuck how long I was. Or if you feel like you've been in this space for a long time, it's time to get out of it. You can untick that box. You ever been a member of something and be like, oh, I didn't realize I was still paying for that. And they're like, oh, so take care of this. And then you take care of business. You, you do that. You cancel it. When we're afraid to contradict or upset people, then I want you, like, ultimately deep down, that means that we're fearful that if people knew us for the real us, they wouldn't like us. We then convince ourselves that through people pleasing, that the reason that people like us is because we are easy to get along with. And so we're likable. And so, listen, I need you to know I'm all for an easygoing team player in life. But if you people please, 
in many ways, you're talking out of both sides of your mouth and you fail to stand for anything because you get blown around as easily as the wind and you allow other people to tell you who you are versus being who you are. And you say one thing to somebody and something to somebody else. And you're like, but I'm just being nice and I want to be easy to go along with. I'm afraid to not be liked. Statistically speaking, 10% of people in the world will not like you. So like, let's just step into that fear and go, ah, and it's all good. I was talking with a client this week and she's probably smiling as she's listening. And this, we talked for an hour about the, how powerful and freeing the phrase is, I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay if, you, if, if somebody doesn't like me. Now, this is, again, taking me years of therapy to get to. That's why I'm sharing it with you so you can start working on it now. But when I finally let go of the, the fact that I, in all my power, cannot make people happy. I cannot fix my parents' marriage. I cannot make people change what they think. This is all on them. That's their responsibility. They're their feelings, their thoughts. And it's, it's none of my business. In the same way, I was able to then go, I'm going to have some people like me and some people not. And I'm okay with that. That doesn't change doesn't change my ability my worth my value how loved I am how how much potential I have my place in the world my piece the place in history it's okay it's 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 all good I'm real I'm really leaning into this phrase it's all good and eventually with enough rinse wash and repeat of this of people pleasing of like really, you know, kind of just going with the flow and doing everything that everybody else wants. But eventually with enough like rinse, wash, repeat, we end up forgetting who we are and we have to start all over in our personal identity of self-discovery. And if you have never heard my story about this, I'm going to give you a very short version of this. When I was um, coming out of one of my most toxic and traumatic area times of my life, um, it was in 2007, 2008. I was stepping out of a, an abusive and toxic relationship and uh, some domestic violence. And basically, I realized um, I had been in a relationship with somebody that was entirely sent, based around me. People, I had idolized him in such an unhealthy way that I was everything I did was to please him. I, and he manipulated me, brainwashed me, built, tore me down. And I ended up, I ended up at rock bottom. And I legitimately didn't know who I was. And so my story of self of building myself from there is the story of, of, of my confidence journey. Like I just started writing them. That everything that I am now has happened because I started asking my question, myself questions of like, how do, who am I? Who did I used to be? Who do I want to be? And I'm talking to God and talking um, to my family members and my the people who love me. And it came down to um, the brief story I wanted to tell you is there was a, I mean, I was so rock bottom. I had, I mean, I had nothing. I just felt like an empty vessel of a spirit. And I thought I was, you know, just another cog in the wheel of humanity. And who was I? And I had nothing special to offer. And I was forgettable. And I was, I was discardable, right? I was replaceable from this person and whatever, right? I was worthless. I hadn't reached my dreams of the Olympics and all these things. I don't, so it's just really low. My brother and his wife came down out of state. They drove a few states to come take me to a caribou coffee. And what I didn't know is that before that, a couple of weeks before, they'd reached out to all my friends in high school, all my friends in college. And I don't know how they, I still don't know this day how they got in touch with them because this was back 2008. This wasn't as easy to find people. Facebook was there, but not everyone was on it. And they, um, they sat me down and they got me a cup of coffee and they said, listen, and they had a little gift bag. And in that gift bag, there were a couple, there were probably 50 pieces of scrapbook pieces of paper, beautiful paper. And on, on each scrapbook piece of paper, there was a white sheet and that white sheet had been, had something typed up. And each one of those, those sentences or phrases or paragraphs that was on those sheets of paper was something that somebody had said about me. And what Nick and Joni had done is they had contacted all the people who loved me, all the people who knew me when I knew me. And they said, tell us what you love about Trish. Tell us a story. Tell us our, our Trish, the one we love, the friend we've known, the little girl we knew since we were eight, the girl you were best friends with when you were 16, the girl you, you know, you traveled with when you were 20. She had lost herself. Will you do us a favor? Shoot us back an email and let us know what you love the most about her, why she's special. And you guys, I'm like almost tearing up as I tell you. So what Nick and Joni did is they said, hey, and again, I didn't know why I was there. They were like, here, we've got this bag, gift bag in front of you. And there's a lot of things in it. We want you to pull a piece of paper out and read it out loud. And I was like, and I'm like, what, what? Read it out loud. And then I want you to, we want you to guess who might have said that about you. And you guys, we were there for two hours. After I did the first three, I like started crying. I'm like, I don't want to do this. This is too painful because I didn't believe it. 
couldn't believe that someone would love me so much nick and jenny would love me so much to go that much effort not just to drive states away but then to reach out to people beyond without me knowing and then that my my friends these people i grew up with these people i went to school with, these, these people who love me that they really did see something different in me that i was worthy of, i wasn't forgettable i wasn't average i wasn't just oh another friend that these lies i had told myself about my identity because i'd been tossed around the wind so much because i'd been broken so down like but it helped me I, I you guys it was the turning point of of my identity finding of my rediscovery of my stepping into power and confidence and strength and rebuilding my life started at that caribou coffee in fredericksburg virginia and that doesn't even exist anymore but every time i drive by where it was i remember and listen you maybe you don't have a nick and joni doing this for you but you can do it for yourself you can reach out to the people you love and go hey can you just tell me i'm just low right now i'm really struggling with like the some, some self-doubt can you just tell me one of your favorite stories about me or maybe why you love having me as a cousin or as a friend like what is it that you think is that you, you always say you love me but like I don't know sounds like I'm sorry I'm pandering for a compliment but I am I'm willing to ask for help because I want to step out of this this trap of people pleasing for for once and for all let's take a quick break here for a sponsorship note for today's episode I want to come clean with you guys one thing I never publicly talk about I didn't used to at least because I worried what people thought of me, I was obsessed with the people pleasing, was the personal parts of my healthcare. And I am over that, which is why I wanna tell you about my newest obsession, the 100% natural brand, Lola. Lola is a female founded company offering a line of organic cotton tampons, pads, liner, all natural cleansing wipes, no toxins, no mystery fibers, or no and no doubts about what is going in your body. Lola products are all gynecologist approved and hypoallergenic. You might not know this, but major brands use a mix of synthetic ingredients in their products, including rayon and polyester. Also, they can be treated with harsh chemicals, cleansing agents, fragrances, dyes. Y'all, I can't believe I used that stuff inside of my body for so many years. I'm so glad I found an alternative solution. Plus, another great thing is Lola, I'm a busy mom. I'm running a business. I'm trying to be a, a loving present wife. Lola products come in a simple customized subscription that gets delivered to my doorstep exactly what I need and exactly when I need on a monthly basis. I personally love how my supply is delivered right to my door every month in a beautiful, clean packaging. Might I add, that also makes life just a little bit easier for me. To say I'm a fan of Lola is an understatement. For 40% off of all subscriptions, visit mylola.com, M-Y-L-O-L-A.com and enter confidence when you subscribe and you're going to get 40% off. All right, let's get back to the topic of people pleasing. I wanted to share with you, close out our coaching and with 10 tips on how to stop people pleasing. I'm going to read these through and then we'll go back and just do a brief commentary on each one. But if you want to check these out for your own, maybe you journal about them, take some, take some encouragement from them, go to the show notes for the show, which again can be found at trishblackwell.com forward slash three, two, four for episode number 324. Tip number one, learn to give yourself internal validation. Tip two, declare yourself in recovery from pleasing, from your pleasing addiction. Tip number three, work to understand your deeper value as a human. Tip number four, know your personal goals for your life and keep your priorities simple. Tip number five, stop apologizing. Tip number six, get off the busy bus. Tip number seven, develop your internal courage to speak up and practice saying what you want. Tip number eight, be more decisive. Tip number nine, practice asking for what you want. And tip number 10, release yourself from the pressure to perform for, for toxic people. Okay, so tip number one, learn to give yourself internal validation. I want you to start complimenting yourself. Keep track of your champagne moments. We talk a lot about that and I walk you through that in the College of Confidence of how to notice your progress versus staying in a place of self-criticism. People pleasing goes hand in hand with self-criticism. Let go of it. Start realizing you're doing better than you think you are. So learning to say, I'm okay being me. It's okay for people not to like me. Like this internal validation means you don't need the external validation which is often what drives people-pleasing behaviors. So tip number two was to declare yourself in recovery from your pleasing addiction. Now, y'all have heard me talk about how I'm in recovery from perfectionism. 
And it's been a really helpful way for me to compartmentalize and separate the me now versus the me that used to be. And so when you can de declare yourself in recovery from the pleasing addiction, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are free from it, but you're in recovery from it. You are recovering because you've made the decision that you're starting the journey. So someone that's in recovery, you, as someone who's an alcoholic who says, I'm starting AA, they're in recovery that first meeting, right? They, the first day that they're alcohol free in the same way that somebody that has 10 years alcohol free is in recovery. I don't care how far you are. I just care that you're in recovery and you're intentionally and proactively saying, I don't do this addiction anymore. This addiction used to serve me. It used to numb deeper feelings, but it doesn't anymore. I, I want better than that. I deserve better than that. I declare better than that. Number three, work to understand your deeper value as a human. That has been huge for me. And one of the simple ways to say, like, I would say, like, recreate your own Nick and Joni caribou coffee moment and really figure out who you are and, and what's your value to the people who love you and that and and then I, I my challenge to you would be to spend time with god and take figure out that value there and 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 that is your personal journey but i know that this the more you draw near to god the more he'll draw near to you the more work you do in your thought life the more growth you will have in your spirit and how you feel and how your confidence is Number four, know your personal goals for life and keep pri your priorities simple. Sometimes we, we people please and we don't say yes to the things we want. We're afraid to ask for what we want. We don't speak up. We don't follow through on our on our passions and projects because we want to do all the things for all the other people. And we, and we often placate them. We often... Um, uh, enable others by not by doing things for them versus doing them let them do it for themselves we show up and we overperform so that life's easy for them and then by in that way we enable them and we do them a disservice and simultaneously we don't show up and stay consistent for our own priorities and the things we really want in life so um, it goes two ways. It's really interesting. Number five, stop apologizing. Apologizing for every now, apologize when apologize, apology is necessary. But like, let's just go in the, um, oh, can we go to, to out to eat here? No, oh, I'm so sorry. I really don't like um, Indian food because I have an allergy to it. Do you mind if we go somewhere else? N uh, no, that's not something you apologize. You go, oh, gosh. I wish I could eat Indian food. It's just I get really sick after. Let's choose another restaurant. Do the difference. Not apologizing for things that aren't necessary to apologize for. And number six, get off the busy bus. And you guys, I, because I've just prepared next this course, this whole course, like a four module course and workbook and a whole month of coaching on this, I, I'm almost afraid to start talking about this because this episode will be like eight hours long. So I'm not going to, but I'm just going to say the busy bus is head straight to people pleasing land and it drives by your house every day and it's going to wave to you. And it's going to look fun, but don't get on it. Don't get on it because it looks all fun and glittery and shiny. Everyone's all your friends are in there waving to you. Look at all the things we're doing. Oh, we're so busy. We're life's so full. We've got over commitments everywhere. I'm going to keep saying yes. And you get on the bus and they're like, oh, thank God, girl, you're on here. Let me tell you, I am so stressed. I am so exhausted. This sucks. Bah, bah. Like, I can't sleep at night. My husband and I haven't had a date in, in three months. And like, now we don't, we don't even touch each other. Like, all of a sudden you're like, this is not the fun bus. This isn't the party bus I was promised when it pulled up. I'm going to tell you, the busy bus is not a party bus. It's not a good bus. Get off of it. Say no, say no thanks. I got my own ride when it comes by. You guys, and it's going to come by and knock on your door. It's going to come by and ring your doorbell. And you keep going, no thanks. I'm not home. I'm not buying it. I'm not getting on. Number seven, develop your internal courage and speak up and practice saying what you want. This could come into something as simple as your relationship with your with your spouse and saying what you want in the bedroom. It could be coming and practicing the courage to say um, the preference of restaurant. It could be saying like, hey, here's how I was really hoping, envisioning we spend our money or give to this particular charity. And of being afraid of what somebody's answer is not going to help you actually take action on it. Like, let's stop being afraid of someone's response or action or answer to what we say. And that means in, in small relationships, but also in bigger relationships online. You know, you guys might have noticed I've started when I, um, on my social media posts, I'm, I've, I'm being more, I don't know, I think I'm getting into some deeper, more vulnerable things. And I, there's a people pleasing part of me that, it, it, that would want me to step out of recovery from this and go, oh, like, well, what if somebody doesn't like that post? And the answer is, so what? 
so what they might like my next one like letting go of that right that's how you you develop your internal courage to speak up for what is on your heart um number eight start being more decisive um i've done a whole podcast episodes on decisiveness so you can go find those in my podcast archives which are kept on my website trishblackwell.com forward slash podcasts but learning to make just quick decisions, really what that comes from is from a sense of self-trust. And we can't get self-trust until we step out of people-pleasing. So working on being more decisive, um, it, it, it goes hand in hand with, with, with the process of, of detoxing people-pleasing. Number nine, practice asking for what you want. Whew, what is it that you want? So it's hard to practice what you want if you don't even know what you want. And often we're so on that busy bus so much and we're people pleasing that we haven't given ourselves the time or space to even know what it is we want. So maybe if that's you, that would be my goal for you this week. Figure out what is it that you want. And big things and small things. And then number 10, release yourself from the pressure to perform for toxic people. And I say toxic people because anybody that you've built up that you want their affirmation and way to earn their approval, their worth, their love, their impressive, their whatever, their applause, their accolades, their attention, they're toxic. Or how you've put them in your life is toxic. So we want to release yourself you from the performance and your value based off of people liking you. Your value, your confidence comes from being who you are so that's what I want you to be who you are now you guys if this week's coaching resonated with you then you're going to want to be more focused and proactive about your personal growth through the progression the confidence stages I I'm blown away with what this class is becoming it is my new master class how to have more confidence you can sign up and and take the class today and I really think you should at trishblackwell.com forward slash free class. And I'm going to share with you in that class. First off, you get a free gift when you register. FYI. You also are going to learn the three mistakes that people, confidence mistakes most people make. How to stop making those mistakes. We're gonna, I'm going to teach you the, the confidence formula in depth. I'm going to teach you the five stages of confidence. How, how to know what stage of confidence you're actually in. And then how to get to the next stage. So that getting to where you want to go and to how you feel doesn't feel overwhelming. It just becomes a strategy. It just becomes part of what you know how to do consistently. How to keep showing up for yourself. Break free from people pleasing. Step into a place of freedom. And I'm telling you, you got to take this class. Go to trishblackworld.com com forward slash free class like like right now like pause the episode and register yourself so you get a slot i don't want you to miss this you are going to i really gonna be blown away with it i'm really excited for what it is and you guys are a listener the episode is probably not expecting it but it is someone on instagram it is meyer.millie and she just sent me a sweet message that said i recently discovered your podcast and i heard all of the episodes within a week. A week! Thank you for your work and for sharing it with the world. And girl, that means that we basically spent, because we've got 324 shows, that means you and I basically spent a full-on week of our lives together. And I, I gotta say, you become the listener episode. On that fact alone, I am trusting that you have written a review and shared the show with your friends. And I'm just happy that you're now connected. You might be... One of the people who are pleased to hear this, as long as others, you guys, I'm a scared to let you know, but I really feel like I, uh, I'm feeling cold and um, it's a little, a little scary to let you know that I'm going to be, we're going to try an experiment in July and if everybody likes it, I will continue, but I'm really excited to start doing a bonus episode per week. You heard it right. You heard it from the horse's mouth look to a shorter probably it's going to be five to ten minute in and i'm thinking thursdays where you're going to get a second confidence podcast episode per week but here's the deal i'm giving it a month try and i need i need to see you show up i need to hear the feedback on the episodes i need to know you're like yes trish this is bringing just growth to my life and so much more encouragement throughout the week and that yeah so i need I, i'm not i'm not giving my full commitment that we're going to keep it going this is an experiment but you got my commitment for the month of July and let's see, let's see how this goes. So, um, I think, I think you guys are going to be excited. I think our dear listener episode will be as well. And, um, you guys, I didn't just, if, if, if you love it, I'll keep doing it, but you got to show up for me because I'm showing up for you guys. I'm cheering you on. I'm sending you all the love, all the feels, all the confidence and all the courage. 
And I want you to know I truly am cheering you on. Now go out there today. Go be more of who you are. Be you. Be free. If you've enjoyed today's episode of the Confidence Podcast, we invite you to check out collegeofconfidence.com. The College of Confidence is the essential resource for anyone at any stage of personal confidence growth. If you're still figuring out how to silence self-doubt or like the reflection you see in the mirror, this is the place for you. Or if you're already pretty self-assured and are just looking for ways to chase your dreams with more courage and more gusto, then the College of Confidence can help you get to that next level. With our extensive course library, monthly trainings, live coaching calls, and exclusive Ask Anything forum, you get the most affordable and accessible coaching support available online anywhere. The College of Confidence is a supportive, active community to help you along the way with feedback, encouragement, and advice. Memberships are available specializing in self-confidence, social confidence, and professional confidence, and start at the affordable price of just $20. It is the place for anyone looking to be free from the bondage of self-doubt or self-sabotage. It is the place where we coach you to step confidently into the calling God created you to live out. Check it out and join us today at collegeofconfidence.com.